Hello viewers, SuperGT here. This is Gran Turismo Sport. The game has had a fairly big update in the last few days and we're going to hit two birds with one stone here because we've got the new car, or one of the new cars, the 4GT uh, Spec 2 test car, as that guy just gives up completely. And we've got Circuit San Croix, which we're racing around here. Although, well, this is one of the three configurations that has been added to the game. So we've got a brand new location. It's got three configurations. This is one of them. Brazilian, sorry, not Brazilian, Portuguese guy into the wall, up into third. Good start so far. So there's plenty to discuss, plenty to plenty to talk about. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is actually the daily races, which are now technically weekly races. They, they made a change with this July update where uh, daily races, well, they would normally change every day. You know, you've got the three races, A, B and C, and they'll change uh, each day. And you, you have the three new configurations to play with. And if you didn't like it, if you didn't like a configuration, well, you just have to wait for the next day and then maybe there'll be one that you do like. But now, they're being changed every week. So we're going to be playing the, the exact same track and uh, car class for an entire week before they get changed, which for me is, is why well, it's way too long. I think only having three daily races as, as it is, is isn't really enough variety in itself. And therefore to make it last a week in, in total is, I think it's a little bit too long. I would like to know your thoughts on this. Um, I, I don't think it's really a positive change. We'll see how it goes, to be honest. But I think playing playing this circuit, let's say in Group Three, for one day is is more than enough. And then the next day, I'd rather you know go to Brands Hatch or go to Suzuka or go to uh, Maggiore. You know, it's nice to have a bit of a change every every now and then. I think a week is a little bit too long. So let me know your thoughts on that. I think that's quite an interesting change. So perhaps there might be scope to start doing more private lobbies, and not necessarily live streamed always, but just I might host my own lobby from time to time, and that way we can just I can set all the settings myself, choose the circuits, and I can limit it to a certain class of drivers. And if you'd like to know, obviously always follow me on Twitter, I think that's the best place to know and I'll always sort of message on there and my Discord when I'm going to be doing that kind of thing. But yeah, that's that's just a quick talk about the daily races, which is it's a big change for me actually as someone who plays daily races all the time and it could affect my videos, the content because, you know, if have, having content, having different uh, combinations every day gives me a better chance to make con different variety of content. Uh, having you know, the exact same circuit for a week might make it a little bit, a little bit more difficult. But we'll see on that. We'll see um, how, that, how that pans out. So we've got the, the car the here, uh, here the, the 4GT LM Spec 2 test car. It's a cool car actually. I, I'm pleased to see it in the game. Now, the thing about it is it's ridiculously fast in Group 3, borderline OP. It is, uh, it is currently dominating this race. And I, I wondered how much of that is because, well, it's a new car and people just want to drive the new car. But I think a lot of it is actually just down to it, it is just ridiculously quick. It is very, very quick in a straight line. And it doesn't seem to have any penalty in terms of fuel saving. Uh, or, or fuel consumption it is very good on both. Uh, just nudged that Spaniard into the wall, got a penalty for it, and just backed off to let him keep his position. But but yeah, the car is very very quick indeed. It seems to dominate this this class. It is quite hard to control in certain kind of corners. In um, in like slower corners, it can be quite. Uh, it can get aggressive on the, on the throttle. Uh, it does like to slide around a little bit. So it depends on the types of corners that you're driving. So, so I suppose the track will play a big, big factor into how this car performs, as well, as, which is true of every car, to be honest. But this car around here does seem very, 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 very good. 
and uh, this guy in the Porsche here is doing very well to even keep up. And well, he yeah, he's doing a good job. We don't know how much he's fuel saving. Well, I don't know. He doesn't know how much I'm fuel saving, but as it stands here, he's doing okay. So we got the uh, we got the car. It's a good car, and it's it's good to see it. It might need a bit of uh, tweaking in terms of balance and performance. We've also got the circuit, uh, a new a new location. Is that Spaniard just drives straight into the wall and relegates himself down to seventh and hands me third down this little section here. Yellow flag. What's going on here? Guy in second has spun around. I'm straight up into I'm I'm, I'm up to the second place now as a result of. Well, kind of just not really driving too badly. And, well, this was my first race on this track. I did a fairly long practice session, you know, to really try to get used to it. But I didn't quite know how it was going to go in a race. Well, my main prediction was that people would be making lots of mistakes, which is to be expected. It's a new circuit. People are always going to be sort of not knowing the limit and maybe crashing more than they probably would on, let's say, Suzuka or something, a track that we all know. So, so it was quite an interesting race this, people kind of all over the place and I did notice certainly that at the start of the day when I was, when I was playing people were nowhere near as good as what they were in the evening when they obviously or clearly played a little bit more, practiced the circuit and done a lot more races and laps, got more experience and got a bit quicker. Portuguese guy out of nowhere with a big lunge into the hairpin, didn't quite work out for him. I keep second position. This is the end of lap number three. This car can just about do three laps around here. If you don't even bother fuel saving whatsoever, it can do three laps. So you don't really have to put too much effort in to to save to save or conserve your fuel. It kind of just does it to the exact amount you need. Match to save eleven percent there. Now I was just really wondering because. The guy in the lead, Devil, who is a really quick guy on this on this game, he, he gained 18 seconds on me, so I thought, oh, he must not have pitted. And then all of a sudden I started gaining a load of time back. So when, when the top driver is in a lobby and he does something different, I think, is there something that I don't know here? So I thought maybe he he wasn't he wasn't gonna pit at all, like maybe you could just make it work. But in the end, at the end of lap four, he did pit with 0% fuel as he went into the pit lane and he's going to surrender the lead something which he should not have done obviously because he should have won this race 9 times out of 10 or probably 99 times out of 100 and I'm going to go through up into the lead with a 4 second margin over 2nd place and Devil who's now in 3rd so quite how that's panned out I don't know my first race is going to somehow be a victory this is the end of uh, lap five, the final lap of this race, and Devil's in second. He's, he ruled me in by a second, but which isn't much on a lap which lasts three and a half minutes. So I think I did quite well on this final lap. And looking behind, he's actually facing the wrong way. I think he's pushing way too hard to try to overhaul me, and he's made a big error. As I then come across the line, I'm going to win my first race around the new circuit. So uh, Circuit de Saint Croix the uh, C configuration and there we go up four positions for our 31st win on Gran Turismo Sport now just like London buses excuse that silly pun um, you wait all day and then two come along at once well that's kind of what's going to happen here with these wins I'm just going to show you how this one started this is essentially all that happened in this race so plenty of slipstream going on straight away the Spaniard goes very, very narrow, hits the barrier on the inside, glances off it, and I'm around the outside into the lead. Let's see if I can just about maintain this this gap. Now, the, on the map, the straights don't look that long, but they are actually fairly lengthy. There's a good four or five long straights on this track, so plenty of opportunity for slipstreaming. And it looks like the Spaniard is just about trying to make the most of that, just kind of chop across him on the entry to that hairpin. And that is about all that happened, because at the end, it was quite an easy, convincing victory. And there we go, race win number 32, two in a row. Now this is where things got, this is where things got a little bit more difficult. This was later in the day, in fact, this was, this was at midnight, 
um, after my live stream. So I was tired from my live stream. I was tired anyway because it's midnight. And well, let me tell you something. If if you start racing at midnight when you're tired, your performance drops and you make stupid mistakes. That's um, probably something you knew anyway. But it's definitely true. So you got to kind of go watch yourself um, when when you're when you're racing late at night. It can be very very easy to have complete mind farts and forget what the hell you're doing and make a silly crash. Looking up the inside of these three guys, I'm just going to try to slot in behind Calster as we go into the hairpin. I went in in fourth and I got out in third, so I suppose that could have gone worse. And I was very late on the brake, so I really could have gone worse. I could have gone right at the back of Calster, who's technically my teammate, uh, as he's also an FOH driver. I'm going to keep it nice and solid here. In third, big kick of oversteer on the exit. This car does like to spin up the wheels when you come out of the turns. Um, and this, this section of the circuit, very, very technical indeed. It can be very, very easy to, to make a mistake around here. A lot of these curve, a lot of, a lot of curved corners, yeah, obviously. Uh, state the obvious. A lot of these corners where on the exit, it's... Um, how to describe it, you're, you're turning whilst you're accelerating, the car does like to slide, it's, it's, the corners are just about tight enough where that becomes a problem. If you're going for a fast sweeper, you can quite easily get on the throttle, like that corner there, and the car's not going to spin, but it's through like the 90 degree corners where the car does just about want to spin on the exit because you're just about turning tight enough. So that, that section, uh, very very difficult to really master. A good lap around here, I think if you can get below 3.30 then you're, you're going very well indeed. Um, my qualifying time was a 3.28.4, the fastest I think is just about a 3.24.9 uh, but there's not many people really below a 26 or a 27. Uh, so that's the kind of benchmark you're looking at. Calster in the lead is in the top 10, well at the time of, at the time of this race here he was in the top 10 so that's the kind of benchmark. Now people aren't always going to be doing their qualifying times in the race, in fact you're never going to be doing that because the tyres are very different when you have tyre wear. So this is the, the long back straight, very very long indeed, a crucial straight really because you can get uh, plenty of slipstream down there and change your position that way. So around the outside, through the hairpin, just make a tiny bit of contact, I think I had my nose was more than half halfway alongside, or about halfway alongside. I think I was entitled to kind of be alongside him. I made a bit of contact. I threw up into second, so perhaps punching above my weight here. But we're going to see if I can go about keeping second position here, which would be a, a good result, I think. So through onto the back straight once again. This is lap number two. Let's see what that gap is. You can see the gap there, about half a second, right? just monitor that gap as we come down this straight because the slipstream is absolutely crazy down here you need to really be about a second ahead of someone and then they won't get into the toe so you can see just how much time he's gained he's gained that half a, he's gained that half a second and that's you know that's free time that's absolutely free he hasn't that hasn't cost him anything in fact he's saving fuel at the same time uh, presumably as he's going quicker well, actually, he's going to burn more fuel by going faster, but he can uh, he can save fuel by doing that, um, by being in the slipstream all the time. That's quite a good tactic, I suppose, in, in GT Sport, just kind of follow someone, get the free slipstream, get the free speed, and save more fuel than the guy in front, or save more time, or save more fuel than the guy that you're following. A bit of a moment through that chicane, the guy you know, not quite able to get a, get past, not able to capitalise and uh, move up into second. I'm, I'm going to stay here for now. We've got the red text of death to contend with for an entire lap around here and it's always annoying on these long circuits because it always just tells you with about one lap left to go and then, well, it's a long lap so I have to deal with it for longer. So over the line we go and a bit later on in the, in the, in the lap you see the guys behind start battling. This is exactly what I need. If you defend long enough, then you know the guys behind are just going to get agitated, start fighting each other, and ideally kill each other. But what's going to happen here is I'm going to get sucked off. It's hard, hardcore sucking 
by that gravel. It was very tempting, and well, I I succumbed to it essentially, and uh, moved down to seventh. Well, back up into sixth, and well, probably back down to seventh again as we get overtaken by this guy. And I'm going to try and sweep around that side. Not quite going to work though. Back down to seventh again. So the German behind us, actually no, that's a different German. We've got a different German here. We'll be battling with the German for second place for the majority of the race, but then a couple of mistakes creep into that game. Now this, as I said, this was late in the day after a live stream. I was tired and probably shouldn't have been racing to be honest. My performance was always going to be worse, but I kind of just wanted the content. So I stuck with it. Now again, down the back straight, plenty of slipstreaming here. Slipstream City, we shall name this uh, circuit. Now into this corner, breaking about 175 metres before the turn. Uh, the Brit ahead goes very, very deep. Can I capitalise on that error? Not quite. I'm on the outside here for this long winding left into the fast kick to the right. Got a Portuguese guy right behind us. Will he dive bomb us like his fellow countrymen in the previous race? I don't think so. Nor into these kind of corners here anyway. So car, uh, Ricard performing nicely. Uh, when you really kind of, I think in many cars, less is more, you know, so you, you push too much, the car bites back on you. Sometimes you kind of just got to be calm, consistent, and the car will, will reward you in that way. So the end of lap three here, we're all going to dive into the pit lane. Everyone doing the three laps and then the two, quite interestingly. No one opting to do the two laps and then the three. I suppose it's always nice to have fresh tyres at the end of the race. Going in with 8% of fuel, coming out with 64%, and we are away in 8th. Not not great, but let's see what we can do from here then. So this, this is uh, lap 4 then, a little bit further into the race, and you see here, mistakes creeping in. And it's these exits of the corners where you're trying to get uh, maximum traction, maximum speed on the way out, but the car not quite cooperating, not quite wanting to do what you want it to do. So sitting here in 10th, it's, it's just one of those disaster races. I mean, I should be up in second, really, or, you know, fighting for second within close proximity of it, but we find ourselves way back here in 10th after a succession of mistakes and errors strewn throughout this race. Um, yeah, don't race when you're tired, kids, and, well, it's a good message, actually, don't Obviously, you shouldn't drive when you're tired, like real driving, and it definitely affects your mental performance too uh, when you're playing a video game. So, if you want to keep your sportsmanship rating and driver rating, um, drive when you're nice and fresh and awake. That's always a good idea. On to the bridge for the fourth time. Let's see if we can. Oh, let's see if we can get a penalty. Yes, we can. We've got our fellow German behind us in the left. We've both had an absolute nightmare. We were fighting for second at the early stage of the race. Now we're fighting for tenth. How the mighty have fallen. So, uh, again, another mistake. Um, really not going my way. A yellow flag ahead. Can't quite see who that is for. So, onto the back straight. This is going to set up a fairly interesting encounter. We have one lap and, let's say, a third left to go. And. 10th, 8th, 8th, 9th and 10th and 11th here, so we can still get 8th position, they're still quite close, even 7th is within sight, 7th and 6th aren't really too far away, so let's see what can happen here, the German up the inside of the other German, I'm going to sweep up the inside of both of them, in a beautiful manoeuvre, they just got totally outdone, up to 9th, guy ahead has a penalty, I have a penalty as well, uh, there's no place on the circuit where the kind of where the penalty kind of gets rid of itself, so I am going to have to serve that presumably uh, just uh, before I cross the finish line. Oh, a bit of extra penalty there. I think I just ran a little bit too wide through that fast kick, and actually we're we're starting to gain on the guys ahead. So this could be very interesting. Now this is this is the very end of the race. Sitting in ninth, sixth place is well within sight. Can we possibly somehow get sixth position? This would be uh, a saving grace for this, this race, which has been otherwise quite a disaster, where we could have easily finished second, but 
well not easily, but we could have finished second, but may otherwise finish on the outer reaches of the top 10. So we're going to tuck into the slipstream of the Portuguese guy. You see me slowly reeling him in. We're going to go for the middle gap. It's not quite going to happen. I'm going to go to the back of the skyline guy here. Into the big hairpin. 175 metres from the corner. Keep the guy on our outside. On the outside. Don't ever cut back on you. We've managed to do that. Up into 8th. Still have a second worth of penalty left to serve. Now we're catching up with sixth place. Is he going to begin to feel the pressure here? He's been on the back foot for this last section of the race. It looked comfortable for him earlier, about a lap ago, but now all of a sudden he's got the pressure of two, three people. And through here, he's messed it right up. He's, uh, he's going to get kind of bundled across uh, almost by that guy. And I'm up the inside. Big dive bomb from eighth to sixth place. Two cars in one go. They're going to come back at me into the final turn. He's not going to be able to go around the outside into that corner. So I'm going to maintain sixth place. Can I just about open up enough of a gap to get rid of this penalty and keep sixth place? Not quite. That was really close though. I think it was about, let's have a look, it was about a tenth of a second. A tenth of a second away from keeping sixth place. And I think I just about served that penalty perfectly, losing minimal time in doing so. But in the end, a bit of a recovery race there to finish 7th after plenty of mistakes. Moral of the story. Don't race when you're tired. And there we go, there's confirmation of the result. Things got heated though. We've seen this before in the after, in the after room, uh, lobby, whatever you want to call it. The German. You drive like a a-hole. Oh God, shots fired. I decided to fire some rather pleasant shots back. So I tagged him tagged him in the comment. Thank you. Let's play again sometime. Sometimes sarcasm is the best way. It just gets them even more trolled. Well, there we go, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts, as always. Plenty to talk about in this one. The daily races turning into weekly races. The new circuit, the new car. I want to hear your opinions. And thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, hit the like button. Subscribe for more. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.